Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Matt Stores, and welcome to Matt's Planning. On today's episode, I have somebody that I am very excited to talk to you on who is an expert in an area that I am pretty interested in. Expert, please introduce yourself and let us know what you're an expert of. Hello, everyone. My name is your friendly neighborhood, Eric Baez. I am a comedian and show producer who is a mild professional expert on Kevin Smith filmography. Fantastic. I have seen quite a few Kevin Smith movies, and I have done some deep dives as time has gone on into kind of like the subcultures and the dynamics that are very prevalent in those films and in the fandom of those films. And I think that one of the main things, kind of foundational things that people should know is that Kevin Smith is a filmmaker, but beyond that, he is a fan. And he has helped mainstream the ideals of specific and special interests. So like the idea that you can have special interests and you can be hyper fixated on them. And that's okay, so long as you have a wealth of money and a group of people that will support you to demonstrate why your special interests are interesting and then bring people together. And then like, but ultimately making the, making a brand new special interest for a whole new group of people to focus on. So you could say like, oh, I really like Batman. It's like, okay, great. Let's get a machine behind the love of Batman, but then just have like a throwaway line about somebody's love of Batman in a movie about people interacting and enjoying one another's company and like establishing friendships and having a hard time and trying to get through it through comedy. And then it's like, oh, and then that kind of gets the steam going to people being like, oh, maybe I should look into Batman. Maybe I should look into the Star Wars thing, that sort of thing. And I think a lot of people don't realize that each film, it has budding Christian allegories to it, especially with like the books of Acts and all of the letters to like the Corinthians and the later parts of the New Testament in that they're kind of in a dialogue sense, like very dialogue heavy, very dictating, not necessarily like what laws are in a Christian world, but are talking about like what it would be to be a good Christian. But in this case, what it would be to be a good fan, what it would be to be a good friend, what it would be to be a good angel, what it would be to be a good boyfriend, girlfriend, employee, that sort of thing, kind of giving some demonstration of what people might think is like, oh, this is bad behavior. But like, ultimately, the things underlying it are, oh, okay, yeah, there is some like, the intent is good, the execution might not be as good as you want. But I could see the underlying like Sunday school, like holier than thou, like kind of proverbs that would be like prevalent in some of the movies. But I mean, most of the time it's just dick and fart jokes. Right. And so that that gets me to my next point, because the the dick and fart jokes, those ultimately are the things that kind of blew everything together. And that's how you get people in, like ultimately Kevin Smith movies are to help build a new church a church that is very welcoming to more people, a church that is welcoming of special interests and all of these different things. And basically being able to tie everything in under the idea of everybody loves dick and fart jokes. And Oh, I see. Exactly. I see whereas in, in this case, the religion is the comedy and the prophet is the dick and the fart jokes. Exactly. Yeah, like they're, the dick and the fart jokes are the sacrament. So the dick jokes are the body and the fart jokes are the wine, so to speak, if you were going to do like kind of a communion parallel and those sorts of things, you can believe anything, but those are the things that guide you into true enjoyment and true understanding of what it is to be a fan, what it is to be a film lover and a film buff. And just the acceptance there is with being in a position of like, oh, yeah, so somebody might come through and they might not 
think the same way as me, but we can connect on dick and fart jokes. And we might, they might like the Flash, I might like Batman, I might like Star Wars, they might like She-Ra or something like that. But we can connect on those dick and fart jokes. And so we are not too dis- is, dissimilar. I feel like it is a way to to bind strangers that aren't familiar with being in a, let's say, an extroverted social setting. But then having this person build kind of a church of fandom, it allows you to go and meet these other socially inept freaks from neighboring towns that you normally actually never meet, like running into a store, running into strangers. This is just your chance to meet them through you both bonding over this one certain person's fandom over liking specific things, such as be it comic books, movies, film, DC, Marvel, what have you, but also just even being a fan of that person in general. Like Exactly, exactly. I've been able to meet people in strangers, strangers in strange lands because I was a fan of this guy's one phrase that he made in one movie. And I just happened to utter that same exact movie quote at a restaurant in a place I've never been to before. Someone overheard me. And then I actually have someone to talk to and a bonding moment between strangers happens. Exactly. And that's ultimately the beauty and the glory that is Kevin Smith and so based on what you've heard so far, how much of that would you say is accurate? I would say everything outside of the biblical church portions of it. Okay. I'd say you're, you're kind of getting in the right area. I don't know if I, maybe I would use the same exact phrasing or wording. Okay. But I mean, so- I, I, I do say if there was ever like a Mount Rushmore of people who ushered in nerd culture... I'm pretty sure Kevin Smith, his face would be on that Mount Rushmore. Okay. And much like Mount Rushmore, it would just be a lot of like entitled straight white men's faces on that Mount Rushmore that ushered in that nerd culture. Yeah, I mean, there is a, a limitation in that. I think that's partially yeah. due to nerd culture being coming up in a time that wasn't as open to alternative voices. Yeah. And now it's one of the leading like uh, purveyors absolutely absolutely when did you first start watching his movies i would definitely say like most people started watching them when digging fart jokes were the most important in your life when you're about 12 and 13 years old absolutely i'm pretty sure i think it was when i was 14 years old actually no i originally saw part of clerks when i was a kid because i walked in on my dad and my uncle watching it Mm -hmm. and so they let me kind of watch one of the scenes because there was so much dialogue and verbiage in that movie that i didn't understand like it didn't really resonate with me until Mm -hmm. i was 14 years old this kid that used to live in apartment complex across from mine he had a copy of mall rats at his house and so we all watched it at his place Oh, nice! And, and i'm pretty sure that's like that's when i started like kind of falling in love with like kevin smith movies and then also around the same time, I was watching John Hughes movies mm-hmm. because I was just starting the whole, like, I'm about to go to high school thing. And I was trying to kind of study up on how high school is going to be and what I learned about all the hierarchies and whatnot. Right. And so watching those John Hughes movies and seeing how many references from those movies were in the Kevin Smith movies and just seeing how you can, like, correlate different movie universes, like, really kind of, like, caught me by surprise. And it was something I became a really big fan of when I was younger. Absolutely. Yeah, I can understand why that would be so, I I don't want to say shocking, but like, so insightful, of like, oh, wow, like he could kind of weave this stuff in and like weave this understanding in. And so like, at least for me, made me feel like I like had an inside scoop about like, it, it kind of created like an inside joke. Like if you've seen this movie, you would understand the joke or understand the theme of the movie a little bit better. And it didn't feel like a lot of other people had been doing stuff that was similar to that with that expectation of like, you kind of need to be in the know. Yeah. It's it's basically kind of like the same reference that I gave the fact of like being able to go to a different area and just say a Kevin Smith movie quote and someone possibly being in the near vicinity, picking it up. And then now you have someone that you can talk to for the rest of the time you're in that new area. Well, here was a guy that was actually doing that exact same thing, but he was referencing movies that he liked in his own movies. 
So if you're a fan of that movie, you were probably going to be a fan of his movies. So that way it was like a, a present for both him and a present for the person watching his movies. Absolutely. And then it's just like, it increases the likely, like it touches on that like nostalgia button of like, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, that brings up that positive feeling I had watching that movie the first time. Oh, oh, and this person obviously kind of enjoyed that too. I kind of connect with the story a little bit more because I I can uh, hypothesize that he also enjoyed it. Maybe that same scene, maybe that same interaction. Yeah, um, and not to mention, like, it's also one of those things where you're like, it helps you get a movie made where they can't be like, oh, I'm going to dissect this movie and there's nothing in here that'll make it a major hit. You're like, no, I followed the exact same tropes that all your other movies that are just like this, that turn into major hits. Not only did I follow those same exact tropes, I even referenced the, spe- referenced the specific movie I followed those tropes from in this movie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you can you can kind of break it down and analyze it from like even a script writing standpoint of like putting them up parallel to one another, like on like a whiteboard and saying like, oh, yeah, this is how this narrative breaks down. This is how my narrative breaks down. Like they're yeah. they they hit similar points. That's that's great. When that circumstance happens to you of like, but you're like kind of on the opposite end of it where somebody says a Kevin Smith movie quote and you hear it, what is your initial reaction when that happens? It's either to respond saying the remainder of the quote if I know it at the time, or just walk up and like kind of reference just the movie was from to the person. It's kind of like a subtle way of saying like, hey, nice t-shirt. Absolutely. Yeah, that that kind of signifier, that signaler of like, oh, hey, I I get the yeah. reference on your shirt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. So when you when you watch the movies, when like how is there, I know he has several series and like several kind of one off movies and stuff like that. Are there movies that you feel are kind of like, that stand out to you as some of your favorites? I mean, I feel like now I only watch them in more of the tone of like nostalgia okay because they were such a big staple in my life like during my high school years they were very important to me and now looking back at adults be like oh i just apparently didn't have anything more important that could have been more important to me Mm -hmm. but uh, no i rewatch them for kind of nostalgic purposes but always just kind of the jersey trilogy the uh, clerks mall rats and uh chasing amy absolutely like kind of the main stable three and then also some of the other like kind of ones sprinkled in like Dogma was always a favorite of mine. Red State was always a favorite of mine. And mm-hmm. then even the Tusk, like when he got like into the weird horror stuff, like that was a big, like I was a big fan of that. Mostly because like it was like watching someone I grew up watching taking like their first like creative leap. So it was kind of cool to watch him do something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I know that Tusk it was just the concept behind it and how it kind of developed and everything like that was just kind of just inherently kind of wild. It was and... also weird because it was based off a letter that they read on a podcast. Right. And because this was like when like podcasting was around, but it wasn't very prevalent, but mm-hmm. it was even before they were putting them on YouTube. And so like, I remember Kevin Smith was also like had his own podcast network before podcast networks became, became things that people wanted to get. And Absolutely. so, like, I, re- I remember listening to the podcast when he read that letter and be like, man, this is kind of a crazy idea. Right. Absolutely. And then being like, and just seeing that on top of Kevin Smith's growth as a writer, director, everything like that, just a creative in general, but like yeah. also seeing like how that kind of ushered in a dynamic in, in just in podcasting of like, oh, yeah, there can be a thing that happens that gets a groundswell of people's interest and then it can turn into this whole thing. And I think that kind of exemplifies everything that Kevin Smith kind of tries to do, at least from my perspective, in that he's a man that understands and can recognize where there's groundswells and can help build those groundswells and like kind of focus them to build it into, we can help promote comic books and help promote people's special interests and everything like that. I just think that's really cool. Yeah, I mean, the guy was having Stanley cameos before there was even a, a comic book movie studio that was doing Stan Lee cameos. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, then that's just, and like just ushering in the the superhero movie before there was really a superhero movie. 
Yeah. And that's just, I just think that that's just kind of, just kind of a delight, honestly. Um, yeah, fantastic. If you were going to, if somebody told you they had never seen a Kevin Smith movie before, what would you recommend that they watch? First off, Clerks. Okay. I would always recommend Clerks because it was like the first original true like kind of storytelling mm-hmm. that the director had is also not only like the person behind the camera, but then also like the person writing the film. Mm-hmm. So I think I would definitely say Clerks. And then after that, I would say probably Dogma. Dogma. Yeah, I think I can see that, especially not to go back to my central point, but just the golden calf dynamic of it. If anything is going to be Christian, it's when the spit with the Christian undertones is dogma. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. And it's it's always especially love having people watch that movie if they like grew up Christian or like had that kind of Christian upbringing and just seeing their reactions of like, oh, wow, this is how this can be kind of articulated. Then like just kind of being not necessarily sh- it's probably shocked in multiple instances. But just you can extrapolate from even even this into something brand new. When was the last time that you watched Dogma? It was, oh, I mean, probably more than ten years. Oh, okay. Why did is that uh, description of Dogma just like completely off? Oh well, I guess I'm just splitting hairs, but like there wasn't really any Christian references in it. It was all mostly based because. Kevin Smith grew up going to Catholic school. Oh yeah, so like Christian in the in the greater sense of Christian, like there is the idea of Jesus, the Bible, and everything like that. Not necessarily like the Protestant. It's purely it's, it's all the same toilet paper, basically. Exactly. I mean, it's ultimately talking about the dogma. It's talking about the stuff that was like kind of built out from the scriptures. Is my understanding? Whereas yeah, the you rubber know, poop monster. Exactly. Exactly. The the stuff you build when you want to build on the narrative that's already established. And like any narrative, if you build on any narrative, eventually with multiple iterations, you get a giant poop monster. Um, exactly. Fantastic. I uh, guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a very standard trope in all religions that eventually, after a number of years, there's a giant poop monster. Just the more you just the more you keep like interpreting it and then rewriting it and then reinterpreting it and then rewriting it and then writing it again and then burning all the copies of it and then trying to rewrite it from memory. It always ends up with a giant rubber shit monster. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Eric, this has been absolutely fantastic. If people want to learn more about you or they want to learn more about Kevin Smith movies, where would you recommend that they look? You can definitely check out my Instagram page called the Something Better Comedy Showcase. Or you can check out my quarterly show comedy showcase called Something Better. It is a DIY, DIY comedy showcase at the May 11th at 8 p.m. at the Mike Drop Mania Comedy Club in Chandler, Arizona. Our headliner is going to be Eric J. Friedman. Fantastic. Our feature is going to be Sari Beliak and Matt Micheletti. And your friendly neighborhood, Eric Baez, is going to be your host. So I will see you guys there on Thursday, May 11th. And if people wanted to learn more about like Kevin Smith movies beyond the movies that you reference, is there anything else that you think that they might be interested in checking out? Oh, you can always go to the Oddcastle website. Kevin Smith actually purchased the first theater that he premiered Clerks in, in his hometown, and is now dedicated to independent films. So you can check out the Smodcastle online, or look at any of his Smodcast podcasts, or any of his YouTube channels as well. Absolutely fantastic. Eric, this has been absolutely a delight. I really appreciate you joining me today. All right, thank you so much, bud. Yeah. My name is Matt Stores, and this has been Matt's Planning.